me on the show today is Franco Terrazano, who's the Federal Director for the Canadian Taxpayer Federation. Franco, great to have you on the show today. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me on. Listen, I know you were at the Senate. We just had the uh, fall like an up update statement in the last couple of weeks. I know you've been at the Senate talking uh, about, you know, some of your concerns about that. I'm just, I'm just hoping you could frame for the viewers just sort of where we're at from a debt perspective. I know that we have seen over a half a trillion dollars added to our national debt in the last couple of years. We also know that, you know, it's, we're at $1.2 trillion. So would you just give us a few stats to put in perspective what's, uh, what's going on with our budgets and, and, uh, and, and spending here in Canada? Absolutely. Well, we're now more than a $1 trillion in debt federally. So what that means is a few things. Number one, it means that each Canadian is on the hook for about $30,000 just in federal government debt. Now, I know many of your listeners, they want to leave Canada as a better place for their kids and their grandkids. Well, already, just because of the $1 trillion debt, their kids, their grandkids owe about $30,000 in federal government debt. Also, the more money the government borrows, the less money that we have uh, to hire more nurses, to improve services, or to lower taxes, because that money is going to the bond fund managers on Bay Street. You know, just through 2027, from now through 2027, interest charges on the government credit card will cost taxpayers $252 billion. That's a cost of 6300 bucks for every single Canadian. You know, that's one of the things that I know that... Uh the government, you know, when interest rates were low, they were saying, oh, no, we have no issues. It's not a problem. But you raise a very good point. As interest rates continue to rise, the servicing costs are only going to continue to increase. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, the real problem is that what we've seen from this government is essentially this approach to budgeting. Spend more on everything forever. When the times are good, when the times are bad, just spend, spend, spend. And let me give you another eye-popping statistic here. In the budget update, it shows that Ms. Freeland, our finance minister, is somehow managing to spend $20 billion over budget. She is somehow managing to spend $20 billion over her big spending budget that she announced back in May, only about half a year ago. Here are the numbers. In the April budget, she said she was going to spend $452 billion. Now in the budget update, she says the government will spend $472 billion. So in just seven months, the finance minister is somehow managing to spend $20 billion over budget. You know, and that's one of the things I like to notice that you guys talked about the amount of money they're spending over budget, whereas sort of uh, legacy media likes to talk about how they reduced their projected deficits, which, which is something totally different altogether. I mean, they've, they've promised or talked about a 50 plus billion dollar deficit. Maybe that's going to be a little bit lower than they projected, but that seems kind of crazy to me that they're celebrating uh, all this overspending. Well, let's talk about the numbers here. Before the pandemic, back in 2018, you had the Trudeau government spending all-time highs, even accounting for inflation and population differences. That means back in 2018, before the pandemic, before any cross-country recession, you have the Trudeau government spending more money then than the feds did during any single year during World War II. And now the government, in its budget, wanted to spend $90 billion more than that. And now Ms. Freeland is blowing the budget, overspending the budget, by about $20 billion. And here's why that matters. Canadians are paying way too much tax because the government is wasting too much money. You know, Ms. Freeland can lower the sales tax from 5% to 3% and still reduce the deficit just by keeping on her budget. You know, one of the other things I, I noticed as well, I know it's been talked about, um, the stat has been that this, these, this, this Liberal government has probably spent uh, more money than every and all uh, prime ministers in the history of this country. Is that is that actually true? Well, the government, the Trudeau government, was spending more money, all time highs before the pandemic. So just let like let's set aside all the COVID nineteen spending um, that we saw during the, the pandemic. Before the pandemic, the federal government was spending more money in twenty eighteen than our federal government did while we were fighting the Nazis, and now we're still continuing to spend over budget. And this is this is quite crazy. And you know, the budget update claims that the government will balance the budget in 2027, but I think taxpayers should be skeptical. First, that's going to be after the next election. But second, the parliamentary budget officer shows that the government is highballing revenue and lowballing interest charges. If you use the PBO's numbers, then the federal government will still run a $9.4 billion deficit in 2027. So it seems like what we're getting from this government is more borrowing uh, as far as the eye can see. 
Well, you know, another thing, and we're going to go to break uh, in a sec, but the other thing is the amount of money they're raising through uh, things such as the carbon taxes. So we come back for break. Let's talk a little bit about uh, carbon taxes. Are they actually revenue neutral and some of those other things when we come back for break?